<laughs> so I've had two books with um, the title Bird in them. I don't have anything planned to say. I'll probably be up here for an hour. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but I mean, I can come with nothing to say and keep you for longer, but I'm not going to. And I don't really like to have people read for a long time to me because I can't really track it. And uh, I'd rather just listen to them but um, talk about stuff. But I'll just do a really short reading. Um, you know, 10 or maybe 12 minutes so that you can get a sense of who these people are and where they're starting out. And then I'm really happy to take questions. I'm happy to sign anything you brought, and including journals. And But I just can't, I can only sign my name because my hand is just an achy hand. It's the hand of an um, aging writer. And I and also I hate personalizing. It's the main reason. And I would, and um, so about 10 years ago, I announced to the publisher that I wasn't going to um, tour anymore because I just hated personalizing. Is that Sarah with an H or without an H? And is that Susie with a Y or an I-E or a Z? Is that an S-U-Z-I-E or S-U-Z-Y? And, um, and then they said, well, why don't you just stop personalizing? It literally had occurred to me. And, um, so for 10 years I haven't, and before then my hand, I used to put it on ice when I'd go home. So I love not putting your names. You can put anything at all, and I really literally will sign anything that you write. So I'm just going to start off, and um, first I'll tell you about birds, and I'll tell you about Sam, because everywhere I go, um, people really want to hear how Sam is doing. So I can just start, I can just do like the question portion myself, actually. Um, so birds, somebody was asking me, um, why do two of your books have birds in them? And it didn't, it wasn't um, intentional. It wasn't like I want to have birds in a lot of titles or, but Bird by Bird was that great saying of my father's to my very distressed older brother when he hadn't started a paper the day that the sem before the the weekend before the semester ended, and um, my dad said, "Just take it bird by bird." In in Northern California, you in fourth grade, you had reports on birds, and you did a report on the state, on the government, and the state, and you had your Sacramento trip, and then the second semester was birds. So, and my brother would just do it: read a little bit, write a paragraph about birds, read a little bit about hummingbirds read a bit of pelicans and just keep doing it and it wouldn't go well but he would start to get it down on paper and that's really the way it still is for me so um and then this book the title imperfect birds comes from a beautiful po poem by the great persian mystic rumi who said each must enter the nest made by the other imperfect birds and it's so meaningful to me on so many different levels but um I love birds. I love doves. I love the peace sign of birds, of the Holy Spirit of birds. I love, I love the idea that if uh, that I think Rumi's usually getting at, which is that if you want to be in the sacred realm, look up into somebody's face. You know, look into people's eyes. Look into where the need is. Look into the heart. Look from the heart. Look it's here the divine and the sacred is wherever your butt is you know and it's in the faces and the presence and the communication and communion of us and I also love the idea and the truth that when all is said and done and we're really at the end of our rope um, really what we have to offer one another we don't take away each other's pain and grief and anger first of all you can't you can't fix or rescue anyone, which is very frustrating for me because I'm, I think I'm good at it. <laughs> and I have really excellent ideas that I feel would really help everyone. <laughs> but you can't, it doesn't work, you know, so. Um, but what I can offer you, I can say, do you want to just sit down for a minute? I can sit down with you for a minute. And, and that's my nest. It's the ragtag, shredding, funky nest made of the most basic of all material, beside dirt. I'm not going to be able to look back at you, but I'm glad you're here. Okay. okay. Well, there, a few more people can sit and look at my butt if they can get up here. Um, you're really welcome to sit down. 
So that's what we have to offer, and that's really all you have to offer to me. And that's really all a writer has to offer to us is our version of things and our imperfect nests. And the writer is saying, come on in, have a seat. I want to want to show you something. Or do you have, a writer is saying, do you have a minute? Come sit at the campfire. I have a story that I want, I want to tell that I think um, you might actually be interested in. So those two meanings and just the birds and the, and the incredible vulnerability of birds and the strength of birds and the, you know, and their predators and their prey and like teenagers are, like all of us are, you know, and everything teenagers are, we are, but we're tired. <laughs> so um, we don't usually get into as much trouble because we most of us want to go home and read. <laughs> so that's where the title came from. And um, this is the third book in a trilogy. I don't even want to talk about this yet. I want to tell you about Sam. That was the bird part. Okay. How Sam? Okay. Sam is amazing, and then I'll tell you about the books in the trilogy. Sam, Sam, son is, Sam is my now 20-year-old son. A lot of you first encountered him on the cover of Operating Instructions when he's about eight and a half, and he's wearing a little tiger suit from Mervyn's, which is where he... Are you taping this? That's fine. What is that doing? It's just looking at you. Oh, okay. okay. Um, looking for your nest. Okay, it's right here. Um, but for a lot of people, he got kind of frozen in time. He got frozen in that photograph of, and and now he has an eight and a half year old son, eight and a half month, half month old son, named Jax. Jax Jesse Lamott. He and his girlfriend Amy, and um, they all live in San Francisco. I live in Marin County in the um, western area, so about thirty minutes, thirty-five minutes apart. So. Um, it was not my plan, it was plan B, and Sam had finally really found himself in school. He never really loved school, and he um, ended up at an art academy in the city and studying industrial design, because whenever I've talked, I've told people, like, my intelligence is so word-centric, you know, and images and, um, and books and literary, it's just like this ticker tape of, of thoughts and words. And Sam, who's, who's very articulate, but his um, brilliance is spatial, you know, and in the imagination. He can see things that don't show. He can see the backside of a pyramid. He can see underneath it. He can, he can do math. He, can, he has kind of a, um, with another mother, he might have been an engineer or an architect. <laughs> you know, but he's like an inventor. He has an invention uh, patent pending on an invention, and he had a... Uh, he had a several thousand dollars that he inherited from his grandma for a dream, and he's used that to sort of bring this invention into the, trying to bring it into the world. And um, he's very, very tall and thin. He has these gigantic brown eyes, which he always had, which he always hated until he discovered at about 14 that they were like chick magnets. 